It's hard to imagine they pose any kind of threat, but Canadian children, some of them young enough to be in diapers, are on the government's security watch list. And that means they need special clearance and have to undergo extra screening before they're allowed on planes. Now, more parents are coming forward after a CBC News story we first told you about yesterday. John Northcott's going to pick up the story for us again today. John, what's the read on whether this is actually potentially or, or presently a widespread problem? Well, it seems to be a growing one, if anything to go by is the number of people that are coming forward saying that their children, and it boils down to what's in a name, their children who, uh, as young as 10 months old, end up in a situation where they are attempting to go on a family trip and their name matches is up with a list. It's called in Canada the Passenger Protection List. Other places around the world refer to it as a no-fly list or a watch list in terms of the name of a uh, either wanted or convicted or being looked for terrorist uh, that matches up with the name of that child, resulting in them being stopped at the border. Now, not necessarily prevented from going on their trip, but it's a delay and it's a problem that these parents are encountering. Here's the father of one of them. It's not fair because I'm sure that there's other people with, I don't know, Sarah McDonald or John Smith, they're not getting questioned or they're not having to go through the hassle or the inconvenience. So, like, we should enjoy the same convenience as everyone else. And we've done nothing wrong. We're born and raised here. And, you know, we live honest and truthfully. And it's not fair. He's just a little baby. Now, that is the father of Nasir Muhammad Ali. He was 10 months old when he first had his diapers patted down on a family trip uh, to Jamaica. This first came to light, and the CBC uh, did a story on another young boy, again, trying to go on a family trip and encountering uh, problems at the border. Uh, his name uh, was Saeed Adam uh, Ahmed, and he ran into the same problem as well. Again, his name matching with someone else who is a whole lot different than he is. So it's an imperfect system at play here, John, but how do you balance what would seem to be security and what? What, common sense on the other side? What are the solutions here? Well, and it's the balance that officials are trying to find, and it's a highly imperfect system and one that is evolving, let's face it, especially not only in Canada, but right around the world with countries involved, especially when in the case of these two young boys, their names are very similar to those of, for example, one man uh, killed for being an Al-Qaeda operative, another part of the infamous Toronto 18 sentenced for aiding and abetting. This is a situation then uh, for those who are security experts. This is their advice. Have a listen. The challenge that we have here is at two different levels. First, there is the Privacy Act that prevents delivering too much pri private information uh, uh, about certain individuals. The second element is from an operational point of view. You don't want to reveal too much information that could be used by the terrorists to sort of maybe avoid being detected. So any changes with the buck stopping with the public safety minister, Ralph Goodale, and saying this about the situation. Canadians expect their government to deliver on two vital imperatives, namely keeping them safe while at the same time safeguarding their values and this country's fundamental character. That is our constant goal. Uh, we understand the minister is going to look into the cases of particularly children like this. Can you attach their date of birth, for example, to it? What are the examples they're going to use? Still, though, for now, for the short term, these families are still going to encounter a delay when they try to go on a family vacation. Heather? John, thank you very much. Okay.